Many Americans are aware of the international problem of sex trafficking. The State Department reports internationally over two million people are victims of human trafficking each year, with between 15 and 18,000 of them being brought into the United States for this purpose, most of them illegally. What most Americans are not aware of is that sex trafficking within the United States is a rapidly growing problem and a clear and present danger to our children. Just a few miles outside the nation's capital, 42-year-old Derwin Smith, earlier this month, pleaded guilty to prostituting a 12-year-old girl he had quote-unquote picked up on the street. While we would all like to think that this is an isolated and rare occurrence, the numbers would suggest otherwise. As many as 100,000 girls are trafficked in the United States each year. What's fueling this epidemic? A number of factors contribute to the increase in sex trafficking. The breakup of the family is a major contributor. The best protection against being lured into sex trafficking for a young girl is a father in the home who is married to the child's mother. The, the explosion of obscenity and the pornographic material on the internet and apparent indifference from federal law enforcement officials, all facilitated by the postmodern view of morality that essentially says there is no right or wrong. My friends, what you will see and hear today is wrong. No matter what political party you come from, no matter what your religious background, I think we can all agree that children, the most vulnerable among us, need and deserve our protection. And during the course of this webcast, we would like to hear from you. If you have a question, you can email us by sending your questions to questions at FRC. Dot org. That's questions at frc.org. Or if you'd like to uh, tweet, you can do that by tweeting to FRCDC. That's FRCDC. Well, to begin our discussion today, I've asked Lila LaRose, the uh, president of Live Action, uh, to share with us uh, some of the information that she has gained from some shocking undercover video of a New Jersey Planned Parenthood clinic in which it appears the clinic organizer there, manager, is helping to facilitate, if not cover up, sex trafficking. Lila, welcome uh, to FRC and to our program today. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for having me on. Well, you have uh, been going around the country uh, working uh, on letting people know what Planned Parenthood has been involved in. And you have some undercover video, which uh, we've seen before, but we want to take another look at it and let you explain just exactly what's going on in many of these clinics across America. Mm -hmm. So let's go to that video clip if we could real quick. This is from a New Jersey Planned Parenthood clinic taken just weeks ago. See, because we might need to just get them in here as soon as they get in here, you know, from our country, why not just get them checked out immediately? Mm -hmm. You know, that way we know what happened. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming most of them are coming in illegally, right? So yeah, so they're, they're not going to have all the before. exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. we're not going to yeah. And we don't do, um, you know, immigrants welcome. We, yeah. we don't require social, you know. Cool. They, cool. Do we, we try to keep everything as confidential, you know, everything as possible. The yeah, only yeah, stuff yeah. that ever gets shared is like with the State Department, you know, positive results and stuff. Oh. All right, Lila, put that in context mm -hmm. for our viewers. What was just taking place there? What you just saw there was what we've been investigating now for a live action for almost four years, which is that Planned Parenthood institutionally covers up the sexual abuse of young girls, of children. But what you're seeing on the tape more specifically is we had actors, before in the past we've had actors posing as underage girls, saying that they were being sexually abused and that abuse was covered up. But in this video, we had actors posing as the traffickers themselves, going in and saying, we traffic the underage girls. We sell them. We exploit them commercially. commercially. Some of them are imported from other countries. And Planned Parenthood workers, and this was a man Manager. Planned Parenthood workers at all levels of the organization at seven different clinics, Tony, told who they thought were traffickers of girls as young as 14 that it was confidential, that they could find a way to work with them and use, this, use their services to help the pimp, give him discounts, keep it a secret, lie on the paperwork, even get taxpayer funds to get secret abortions and birth control for these sex slaves, for these underage girls. Mm. Now we're going to talk in a moment. We're going to have we have a number of experts, and you're going to want to hear what they all have to say. We're going to look at the international aspects of this. We're going to see what the federal government is doing to address this issue. But the reason I wanted Lila to come on today, as we started this uh, program, 
because Lila, we were together a few weeks ago on this issue of uh, specifically on Planned Parenthood, but why I think this is important to uh, Americans is that what you s just said, you said in seven clinics you saw mm -hmm. this, and these are clinics that are actually being supported with tax mm -hmm. dollars. Exactly, and we're talking about an organization, Planned Parenthood, which is the biggest abortion chain, but is also getting over $333 million of its billion dollar budget from taxpayers, federal, state, and local funds. And the clinic that you just saw on the tape where the manager is telling the pimp of underage girls of these young victims saying that we'll keep it confidential, we can get you these secret services, lie about, the, lie about their age, that was a tax funded clinic. That was technically a Title X clinic getting several thousand dollars from ultimately the federal government. So we're talking about money that's coming from taxpayers that's going directly into abortion clinics that are furthering the victimization of young girls across our country. Now, wouldn't, I mean, most people I would think when you're going to a health care provider, that would be a place where if you were trapped into something like this, you could maybe hope to find help, somebody who would find a way out for you or alert authorities that you are you are being you're a sex slave. Exactly. And Tony, I mean that's a, that's exactly the, the point here. These are mandated reporters for sexual abuse. Planned Parenthood clinics in pretty much every state there's some form, usually very strong forms of immediate mandating reporting for any suspected sexual abuse of children. But what we're seeing is the exact opposite. So not only are they mandated to look for look for try to identify sexual abuse, but then to immediately protect those girls by reporting it and getting authorities involved. Instead, you see immediate willingness to cover up abuse on repeated occasions and to go beyond that to actually work with the abusers to facilitate further abuse with secret abortions and birth control and other services. Now, in this latest round of videos, you, you went into how many clinics? Seven different clinics all levels of the organization from the manager to the head supervisor to the front level staffer. But you have been kind of doing this work on Planned Parenthood for over four years now and have gone in over a dozen mm -hmm. clinics in all. Is this what some would say, well, you know, you're going to have a bad apple here and there? <laughs> Well, first of all, like you said, we've done over a dozen. We've done 17 clinics now across the country in over seven different states. And I think the, the question of bad apple or is this an institutional problem is answered by the spokespeople of Planned Parenthood themselves. The spokesperson defended Planned Parenthood employees' behavior in these tapes, the, the willingness to aid and abet sexual trafficking of children, by calling it professional behavior. We were just answering their questions. We were just giving them the services that we give out. They don't draw a distinction between abusers and rescuing victims. They're mm -hmm. concerned ultimately is abortion first and putting powerful hormonal birth control drugs into young girls. The other thing too that I don't think a lot of people realize, but Planned Parenthood is actively lobbying against mandatory reporting requirements for health providers like in the state of Illinois. Just recently they started lobbying against a provision that would require clinics at all levels to ensure that they report abuse, but they're saying they don't want that requirement. It's too much of a requirement. So they don't like to report abuse, they refuse to report abuse, and they're ultimately furthering the victimization of these girls. 